So Jonathan, you're, you're one of the most prolific and respected directors of our time, yet you remain a modest resident of little old Nyack. Mm. Uh, what, what is it about the area that you're so attached to? Ah, uh, yeah, well that's, you know, my home is in Nyack. It's been my home for 20 years. Um, and, uh, you know, we, uh, my wife and I first moved up there because we were attracted to the, um, we thought there's a good public school system and we thought uh, there was terrific diversity in the community. We liked the way it looked. Everybody loves being near the river. And you can go into the city if you want to. It's perfect. Cool. Yeah, and it seems your attachment to Nyack and the community at large extends to your films. Do you go out of your way to try to make films in this area and use as much local talent as you can? Well, um, I, I don't like going to distant locations anymore to make films. I want to be, especially with kids in school, and I want to be at home. Um, and I want to sleep in my own bed and what have you. So I'm attracted to stories that can be filmed in the, uh, the tri-state area, as this one was. But um, in terms, you know, I love working with professional actors, and I also love working with non-pros. Um, I love casting a movie by how I feel about someone, um, whether or not, um, again, they're a trained actor or not. And, um, you know, I've, we've got a lot of interesting people um, in Rockland County. So yeah, there's a number, actually there's a number of uh, people in the new movie that, uh, that are people who I just find very interesting in real life, so I have to operate on the premise that they're going to be very interesting uh, on film as well. Now your latest film that we're here to talk about, Rachel Getting Married, is another movie with a, a lot of local ties that opens in just a few days. Now you've been through this maybe 30 times already. Does the anticipation of the opening of a new film ever get old? Well, you know, with, especially with this picture, um, from the very start, I've, I've, tr I've tried to, I'm, I'm working with uh, an approach that isn't quite as compulsively all over every aspect as maybe previously I've done. I've wanted to, maybe it's because I've been doing documentaries so much, but I've wanted to ventilate what we see on screen and I haven't wanted to, to just kind of be imposing everything on it. I've, I've kind of gotten into a step back, almost fly on the wall approach to things and set the actors free and see what they create and encourage the cameraman to shoot it the way he wanted to. We didn't have any set shots, pretending we were making a documentary. The editor had a terrific approach to stuff. I didn't try a million different things and because I, I liked what I saw. I liked what I saw very much when we were shooting, when we were cutting. Now, I'm, even now, I'm kind of standing back and I love this movie. I'm very, very happy with it. And I'm kind of enjoying the fact that it's going to open. I'm certainly hoping that people show up. I'm even guardedly optimistic and kind of a little confident because we've been getting basically terrific very, very strong uh, response. The picture seems to be really striking a chord with people. So do, you, do you feel closer or like a more personal connection to Rachel getting married than you've had for a lot of your earlier films? Well, um, I feel a very, very strong personal con connection because the, um, uh, the, the themes um, of this film are really universal. It's a real family film. I don't mean that's when you come see with the whole family, but it's a, it, it, in the same way that, well, Chekhov um, uh, goes deep inside a family and, and will show a family warts and all in search of the kind of the truths of the ties that bind and, and, the, and the forces that can, can drive us apart in a family. And um, there's a lot of resonance, there's a, uh, a rehabilitation dimension to this, and uh, when I was a kid, uh, my mom was an alcoholic, and uh, she, through the help of AA, um, uh, was able to um, move away from her addiction to alcohol, and she did that when she was the same age as the character that Anne Hathaway plays, and I think that this is one of the most heroic things a, a person can do. Um, I mean, we're all addicted one way or another to various things and alcohol, drugs, these are tough things to, to kick and they're, th they're the kind of things that can bring tragedy to families. And um, so I have great respect for those that make an effort to, to free themselves of addiction. 
And um, I'm very touched by Anne's character in a funny way, again, because of not only because I'm, I'm basically respectful of that anyway, but because it kind of evoked my mom for me in a certain way. Now, the early notices, as you kind of hinted at, suggest that Rachel getting married is, is going to be a critical success. I certainly hope so. Uh, at this point in your career, would you say that that's more important to you than, say, box office smash? The two things that are really important uh, are, first and foremost, most important of all, is that the picture is a good picture. That, that you go out and you're able to make a good film, a film that everybody involved with can feel proud of, and a film also that to me is sort of part of the solution as opposed to part of the problem movie, a movie that that has kind of a humanistic dimension to it. Um, and I, that mission is accomplished. Uh, so I feel whatever happens now, I'm very glad I made it. I'm very proud of it. Uh, the other thing that one hopes is that not to, no, I don't hope for you know blockbusters or anything like that. This film was never intended to, to kind of aspire to blockbuster heights, but I sure hope that it makes its money back for the distributor, for the financier. And that will require people going to see it. So I do hope very, very much that people go to see it, not measured in terms of, of money particularly, but just that, that folks turn up. Now, you, you, you've kind of answered this uh, a bit already, <coughs> but I'll ask it anyway. Um, given all the movie ideas that presumably you're offered and all the ideas that you have on your own, what was it specifically? about Jenny Lamette's script that drew you to this project? Well, um, I, I don't read scripts anymore. So I'm not offered uh, much anymore because I, I just don't accept scripts to read. Um, I love making documentaries now and music performance films. Um, it's where my greatest passion lies now. This script, I got a phone call from uh, Sidney Lamette, the master American director who said, my daughter has written a script, and it's beautiful, and you should direct it. Uh, really, in order to be respectful to Sydney, not because I went, oh, maybe it's good, I said, of course, intending to read it real quick and call back and say, it's beautiful, but I don't do that anymore. And I fell in love with it. Um, why? Because it's so original. Jenny's a new writer, and she sort of doesn't know the rules yet. So her whole thrust for this piece was character, character, character. And she didn't try to do that thing that we do in American movies all the time, which is as fast as we can and in as many ways as we can, we try to make the characters likable. She didn't do that. She wanted to make the characters real and interesting. Um, and I loved the situation. And I found myself laughing out loud. She's a hilarious writer. And then later, when I read it the first time, I actually found myself, and this has never happened before, sitting there with tears rolling down my face because I was so moved by it. So when I finished it, I thought, even though I'm now documentary man, and perfectly happy there and secure there, I got to do this. Um, so uh, so were, were you suggesting that uh, if uh Hollywood came calling and wanted you to do Titanic 2, but you're just not there oh, no, anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm not at all, I'm not, I'm, not only am I not interested in doing lar large budget movies, there's no way on earth I would ever go there again. Um, I did that for a while, I had a lot of fun, uh, I had a couple of successes, a couple of not successes, and I got off the merry-go-round when I wanted to, and nothing could lure me back on that, you know, blockbuster, big budget thing. I still enjoy seeing those movies, but I'm out of there. But you have had a great deal of success, not only with some big films, but in directing big time actors. A couple of your actors, Tom Hanks and Anthony Hopkins, have won under your direction Academy Awards. Mm -hmm. Now we've got the preliminary buzz on this film is that Anne Hathaway might be uh, nominated for an Oscar. As the director of this film, how does, how does that feel when you uh, have directed someone who is getting that kind of uh, uh, acclamation? It makes me feel um, happy because it's verification 
of what I have felt. I feel that Anne gives a beautiful performance. So if people use the Oscar meter as one way of saying great work, how delightful. Um, so that's, I think that there's kind of a, maybe there's a trap um, where as if, if your name starts getting mentioned as a possible Oscar winner, maybe you now want to win that. And maybe if you don't get a nomination or don't win it, then maybe you'll be disappointed. And I think that Anne's work is so special and so beautiful in this. I hope she never winds up being disappointed because she didn't get, get this or didn't get that. But when you're, when, you're the, when you're the director of a film and, and one of your, your cast gets this kind of acclaim, mm. do you feel in any way responsible for having elicited that performance or do you take any credit as the director or is it really just the actor? Oh, no, it's, it's the opposite of guilt by association. If anyone gets complimented on any aspect of their work in connection with the picture you directed, it's a total ego trip. I love hearing that. I love it. Now, I've, I've heard you say, or I've read, that you, you've, you've said that it takes more courage to direct an independent film than it does a, a big budget Hollywood picture. Could you elaborate on what you mean by that? Um, I, I, I think I know what, what that relates to, and I didn't, I didn't uh, that's a misinterpretation of, of, of the point I was making. For me, it took a lot of courage to step away from the security of the kind of budget and equipment and everything and a, an approach that I've worked on for decades and I know and I, I had developed a style that I was very confident in and that I you know respect and stuff and it was courageous of me uh, uh, to walk away and try to do something in a whole new style uh, but I, I had to because as a movie goer I love the more liberated loose limbed spontaneous, feels very real style. So I took a deep breath and went for it. Well, I think <laughs> that does actually answer the question well. And um, it's a kind of a follow-up. I've read some of, the, um, some of the actors in Rachel Getting Married have suggested that your style, like you were almost laid back and playing it by ear, but at the same time, they could tell that even though you were kind of just hanging back, that you knew exactly what you wanted and and you were going to keep on doing it until you got what you wanted so was Rachel getting married indeed a, a departure from your your regular directorial style well in terms of physical style yes but it's true what you're saying in terms of being fully engaged and making absolutely sure that the story and the themes and how I understood the characters as being richly communicated. Uh, no, I was very much there. I tried to, but I just tried to hold back and say, let's do it again, before running in and making and trying to impose some specific idea. Um, and time and again, um, I found that without interrupting uh, whatever train of thought the actors had going after a take, and um, saying, do it again, do it different that what came up next was uh, arguably more exciting and better than what might have happened had I requested some particular alteration. Do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, I, I, before, we, I want to make sure before we run out of time that I do talk about the great Bill Irwin. Yeah. Uh, our, our neighbor and, yeah. and, and friend from Nyack. You cast him as the father of the bride yeah. in, in the film. I think he's one of the Tre America's treasures. What, how do you feel about him as oh, a performer? No, I, I have been, since the first time I saw Bill um, as a mime or a clown, as he calls that word, from the first time I saw him, I knew I was seeing genius. And I have wanted to work with Bill for a long time. And even though he's had the um, tremendous notoriety he's received from, you know, getting the Tony Award for um, uh, Virginia Woolf. He still hasn't had, the movie hasn't come along yet that has capitalized on Bill Irwin. And I can't believe that I'm the one, the first one that got the bill, my neighbor and dear friend, to capitalize on that cat's magic. Um, he's so brilliant in this movie, I knew he was going to be. Thank 
he's going to be talked about a lot when it, uh, they start talking about awards and stuff. And I'm so proud. And I'm not only proud. I'm 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 stuck up a little bit. I'm like, I knew it, suckers. <laughs> I got to him first. You know, it's like really very sick. You know. Right. Well, that's good. I, I hope I hope you're right. I hope this really takes off for him because I can't think of a more deserving person so flying under the radar than, yeah. than that guy. Yeah. Regarding Jenny Lamette's script, um, it seems to me like it almost necessitated some improvisation uh, in order to properly translate it to the screen. My question is, uh, how much of what we see on the screen is improvised? Well, I love that the picture feels improvised because to me that means it feels very in the moment and maybe very spontaneous, which is what I was hoping for. Um, actually, um, everybody stuck very, very faithfully to the screenplay. Um, the, my little math thing, I, I've been thinking about this, um, is that 100% that of Jenny's script, we honor Jenny's script 100%. Meanwhile, given the nature of the characters and stories she created in the situation, sometimes the camera was left rolling, and we have another extra bonus 10% of stuff that the actors came up with that is, so I guess we have a movie that's like 110% because it's 100% loyal plus. Cool. Um, this is just kind of a personal question for me because as a, as a somewhat of a filmmaker myself, you're, you're one of my heroes because somehow you've been able to have this incredible career as a filmmaker, mm -hmm. yet it seems to me you've, you've been able to do that but, and, and still stay completely out of this Hollywood old boys club kind of thing. How, how were you able to, to do that? Um, I can answer that question. I live in Nyack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a choice. And you know, when I was younger and starting out, and I lived in Los Angeles sometimes, and, and you know, it's, 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 it's exciting. But um, you know, there's two things I think that have uh, have driven me. One is if you get too much inside the business. For me, then you know more and more about the movie business, and maybe less and less. You have less time to know about what's going on in the real world. And um, I think that's probably it. I, I don't. You know, my, my little metaphor is because um, when I lived in Los Angeles, it was exciting. Um, when I moved from Los Angeles, it was a relief. And I, I think my, my metaphor, Steve, it, is that it's like if you, if you live in Hershey, Pennsylvania, you can smell the chocolate all over town. And that's great, but it's great to get away from that, too. I like that. Uh, it's kind of a, an odd question. Ordinarily, I'd probably ask you who your influences have been influences as a filmmaker have been, mm -hmm. but now that you've made prob arguably more films yourself than most directors ever will, I was just wondering if you've noticed any filmmakers out there that are kind of emulating you. I wouldn't think in those terms because I don't, I don't, I certainly don't do any original. I'm, I'm, I know who I'm emulating. Uh, um, I'm, I think I'm, you know, because, because one loves something so much, so I love a lot of films of the French New Wave. I love the films of Cassavetes. I love the films of Robert Altman. Um, and a lot of the Danish films, like the films of Lars von Trier. Um, uh, so I love them, that kind of mode. I love documentaries that's still in that mode. But I love the work of Paul Thomas Anderson, who's not in that mode. And when I see um, There Will Be Blood, I'm literally astonished at, and, and, and thrilled by the originality of his photographic approach. It's like he's reinvented uh, how, to, how, to, how to make cinema. So um, there's really nothing original about what I, there's nothing, there's nothing anyone can take from the way I do something because I'm too busy taking it from the way others. The Paul Thomas Andersons, and I think the Wes Andersons, and I think the guy that made Napoleon Dynamite. Now these are stunningly original films. Well, I think you're being modest, but uh, that, thank you for that. Um, two more questions. Thank you. What are your hopes for this film? Um, 
my hopes, uh, my hopes, I hope people come and see it. Um, I hope it stays in theaters longer than most movies stay in theaters. Um, I hope that it stays in theaters longer than usual, much more than I hope it plays in a lot of theaters, if, if you get that distinction. Um, and I hope it touches people. Um, I've had some people come up to me and tell me that, that the film really resonated for them on the basis of experiences they've had in their own family. And I've had people say that they felt better about some stuff they've been through, having seen the picture. Um, and uh, that's really gratifying.